Most of you will solve this question with algebra using a formula that you memorized in school. Some of you might work backwards from the answer choices. Those methods might get you to the right answer in under two minutes, but what a wasted opportunity to improve your reasoning. You see, those methods won't work when the GMAT makes the question harder. For example, changing the numbers to 982, 988, 993, with an average of 990. Well, we're going to see how to use a beautiful reasoning-based solution for this question, and we're going to see that right now. They draw this horizontal line that represents the mean, and then any data points that are below the mean, I'll draw them as weights. The idea is that they're pulling that mean down. And any data points that are above the mean, I'll draw them as balloons. I'm imagining a kind of birthday party balloons with helium, uh, trying to pull that mean up. All of the deviations below the mean have to exactly match all of the deviations above the mean. Otherwise, the mean is going to move either down or up. In other words, the forces that are trying to pull the mean down have to match the forces that are trying to pull the mean up. So we have Carmen at 8 below the mean, we have Juan at 2 below the mean, and we have Maria at 3 above the mean. When we look at everything together, we have a total of 10 below, so a force of 10 pulling the mean down, and only a force of 3 pulling the mean up. That means that the missing point has to be exactly 7 above the mean, and so our answer is 87. If you like this approach, be sure to check out my book. It's all in there. What do you want me to talk about in my next video? Type it down in the comments below and maybe I'll make a video just for you. Make sure you're subscribed and click that little bell icon below so you don't miss any future videos. See you next time.